I think Pringle's initial intention was to make tennis balls. <laughs> but on the day that the rubber was supposed to show up, a big truckload of potatoes arrived. And Pringles is a laid-back company. They said, fuck it, cut them up. I smoke cigars occasionally. I don't know a lot about cigars. I came out at the cigar store, the man behind the counter said, what kind of cigars do you like? Uh, it's a boys. <laughs> You know, you can't please all the people all the time. And last night, all those people were at my show. <laughs> I go to a lot of bars when I'm on the road. A lot of bars have black lights. So when a bar has black lights, everybody looks very cool. Except for me. Because I was under the impression that the mustard stain came out. I like baked potatoes, man. I don't have a microwave oven. It takes forever to cook a baked potato in a conventional oven. Sometimes I'll just throw one in there, even if I don't want one. <laughs> by the time it's done, who knows? <laughs> I'll throw a potato in and go on vacation. to an argument with the girlfriend inside of a tent. That's a bad place for an argument, because then I tried to walk out and slam the flat. <laughs> How are you supposed to express your anger in this situation? Zipper it up really quick. I like to drink before the show. I have a couple of drinks before I go on stage. <laughs> Every time people applaud, I'm always going, no, 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 hold on. That's dumb. My manager's is cool. He gets concerned. He says, Mitch, don't use liquor as a crutch. I can't use liquor as a crutch because a crutch helps me walk. <laughs> Liquor severely screws up the way I walk. It ain't like a crutch, it's like a step I didn't see. <laughs> but alcoholism is a disease, but it's like the only disease that you can get yelled at for having. Provocative. Damn it, Otto, you're an alcoholic. Damn it, Otto, you have lupus. <laughs> One of those two doesn't sound right. <laughs> I've had four AIDS tests in my day. The AIDS test is very scary to get. It doesn't matter what you've been doing. Waiting for the results is frightening. So I don't get the regular AIDS test anymore. I get the roundabout AIDS test. I call my friend Brian. I say, Brian, do you know anybody who has AIDS? <laughs> no? Cool. Because <laughs> you know me. I was at a bar, I was minding my own business, no one was talking to me because I just did a show. <laughs> this guy bumped into me, which is cool, but he didn't apologize. He said, move. And I thought that was rude, so I said, go to hell. Then I started to run. <laughs> he caught up with me. 
He had a mustache, a goatee, a pair of earrings, a pair of sunglasses, his hair was in a ponytail, and he was wearing a hat. He said, hey, you got a lot of nerve. I said, hey, you got a lot of cranium accessories. <laughs> This is a smart crowd. When I play the dumb crowds, I have to say, you got a lot of shit on your head. <laughs> I'm gonna get a little personal towards the last part of the set. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna do it from the city position. <laughs> we have her sitting on the stairs. We all personal, you know. <laughs> People flipping around the channels and say, what the hell? What's Hebert doing just sitting down telling jokes? <laughs> Acid was my favorite drug. Acid opened up my mind and expanded my mind. <laughs> Because of acid, I now know that butter is way better than margarine. <laughs> I saw through the bullshit. <laughs> when I was on acid, I would see things like beams of light. And I would hear sounds that sounded an awful lot like car horns. <laughs> When we were on acid, we were going to the woods because when you're in the woods trip and there's less likely a chance he'd run into an authority figure. But we ran into a bear. That was even more of a buzz kill. My friend Dwayne was standing there raising his right hand, swearing to help prevent forest fires. He got him away from the bear, he put his arm around my shoulder, he said, Mitchell, smoking is way more intense in person. <laughs> I went to England to tell jokes, and I wanted to do my Smokey the Bear joke in England, so I had to ask the English people if they know who Smokey the Bear was, but they don't. Because in England, Smokey the Bear is not the forest fire prevention representatives. <laughs> they have Smacky the Frog. <laughs> it's a lot like a bear, but it's a frog. And I think that's a better system. I think we should adopt it. Because bears can be mean. <laughs> but frogs are always cool. I never has there been a frog hopping toward me, and I thought, man, I better play dead. <laughs> here comes that frog. <laughs> I've never said, here comes that frog in a horrifying manner. It's always like optimistic. <laughs> like, hey, here comes that frog. All right. Maybe he will settle near me and I can pet him and put him in a mayonnaise jar with a stick and a leaf to recreate what he's used to. I certainly had to punch some holes in the lid because he's damn sure used to air. And then I can observe him. And he won't be doing much in his 16 ounce world. I like to talk about the differences between frogs and bears. I know it's cliche. 
Like when there's a frog around, I don't have to hang my sandwiches from a branch. A frog knows they are for me. He'd rather have a fly, because a fly zigzags, and my sandwiches do not. Unless I go like this. There ain't no frog attack prevention pamphlet. Now, if the frog is hopping towards you, do not look the amphibian in the eye. This will incite him. 